you're taking the all of the freedom away from one person in order to free another person, not, you know, liberty in the virtuous sense, but liberty in the sense that you don't have to face the consequences of your actions. That's why it's immoral, because it takes the rights of an innocent person. Capital punishment does the opposite. It preserves the rights of an innocent person by taking the life of the guilty. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. So let's go ahead and move on to the next argument. Argument number 10. How can you be for capital punishment if you are against abortion? So again, just like the, the last one that we looked at, this is another red herring fallacy. Again, they're trying to discredit you or show some kind of inconsistency that says, no, no, you're not allowed to talk about this issue. You can't possibly be right on this issue because I disagree with you on this other issue. Well, that's not a good debate strategy, but let's just entertain that for the sake of, of you know, just sort of weeding through that argument. First of all, it's not remotely a one-to-one -one comparison because we're talking about, in one case, the life of somebody who is guilty and has been proven that they're guilty and there's an extremely lengthy process for that and they have to prove it over and over again before they ever get the death penalty. Uh, that's especially true in the state of Alabama. I've spoken to members of the Supreme Court on this. They talked to me about the process and frankly, I thought it was overbearing. <laughs> I thought that they should have gotten to a verdict quicker. But they, to their credit, they want to do their due diligence to make sure that nobody gets the death penalty that isn't supposed to get it, that they're not actually guilty on that. So this is kind of like saying that you can't be for capital punishment unless you're in favor of drive-by shootings. Like that's, that's not a thing. Like I, I'm in favor of preserving innocent life and whether it's taken through a drive-by shooting or whether it's taken by somebody with a pair of forceps in an abortion clinic, I, I'm just against the death of an innocent person regardless. The death of a guilty person is a different matter. They're not dying because somebody decided that they should be unalived. They're dying because there was a process, a legal process by which their right to life has been forfeit by their own actions, not because of the decision of somebody else. And it's crazy to me that people bring this up because the word punishment is right in the name. It's called capital punishment which would be a pretty strong indication that the purpose of it is not just a random loss of life, it's a punishment for an action that the person that is receiving that penalty engaged in. It's not like just deciding that some random person on the street should no longer be alive. In fact, if I did that, that would merit capital punishment for me. That's the point. Just like the last argument where we were talking about guns, the purpose of capital punishment is to preserve life by taking the life of people that threaten the lives of others. That is the idea behind it. Ironically, these are often the same people that talk about how evil and heinous rape is. And by the way, I agree. In fact, I actually think that you should get the death penalty for rape. I think that murder and rape are the only two crimes that you should be able to take somebody's life for. That's how egregious I believe a violation of human rights rape is. But it's ironic that these same people that talk about how horrible rape is and how uh, evil and vile and wicked it is, and they're not wrong, but they'll say, but that person shouldn't lose their life. Well, no, if it really is as bad as you're saying that it is, they absolutely should. When you forcibly take somebody sexually and assault them in that way and steal away their innocence, that is something that is only capable of being done by a depraved mind, and you should lose your life because of that. That may be an unpopular opinion, and I know that the, one of the big differences in the arguments in this and rape is that rape is significantly harder to prove than murder is, and I understand that, and that's why I think there should be a very high bar to clear to receive the death penalty for rape. But nonetheless, I think that that actually should be something that plays in the mind of a rapist that, oh, if I get caught doing this, they could, they could kill me. That is a thing that I want circulating in the rapist head before they attempt to try to do something like that. And that's the purpose of capital punishment in the first place, is to act as a deterrent. And the thing is, the way that this question often comes up is an indication that we've largely overlooked what the criminal justice system is supposed to do. Is it supposed to reform criminals? Yes, I absolutely want them to focus on that. Is it supposed to punish bad behavior? Absolutely. That is something that capital punishment specifically is supposed to do. 
But that neither of those two things are actually the primary goal of the criminal justice system. The criminal justice system should be concerned with those things, but that is not the primary objective. The primary objective is to defend the innocent. So when a violation of an innocent person's rights takes place, it is the criminal justice system's job to step in and make sure the person is not capable of doing that again. Capital punishment is the ultimate way of seeing that happen. And I'm not saying that you should be like executing petty thieves or anything like that. Like I said, rape and murder, the only two things I think that should merit the death penalty. But I think that those things should mean that the death penalty is on the table. And that is because, again, I want the criminals to be thinking about that and have that in the back of their head whenever they're thinking about committing one of those two crimes. The difference in that and abortion in this context is that abortion essentially rewards the perpetrator at the expense of the victim. Now, I actually think that children are a blessing and that having children is a blessing. Even if you wind up giving it up for adoption, the fact that you were able to use your body to give someone life, that is a superpower that women have that men don't. Uh, the, the fact that you were able to do that is in and of itself a blessing. And so I don't see getting rid of a child and killing it and all of the side effects and, and all of the things associated with it that, that come with that. I don't really see that as a reward, but the concept is you are rewarding the person that acted irresponsibly by giving them back their freedom at the expense of an innocent bystander. And that's never acceptable. I mean, it would be tantamount to somebody that smokes their entire life and ruins their lungs and they develop lung cancer and they find some random person on the street with healthy lungs, take their lungs out of them so that the irresponsible person does not have to suffer the consequences of their actions. Well, that's not fair. You're taking the all of the freedom away from one person in order to free another person, not, you know, liberty in the virtuous sense but liberty in the sense that you don't have to face the consequences of your actions. That's why it's immoral, because it takes the rights of an innocent person. Capital punishment does the opposite. It preserves the rights of an innocent person by taking the life of the guilty. That's the purpose. I will say this, though. There are several positions that a person can take that, though I may disagree with them, I understand why they come down the way that they do against capital punishment. And I've heard very good arguments on both sides on this. This is one that I don't have a, a super hard affiliation for because I do understand the other side. I really do. I, I, I can see how they reach the conclusion that they did. Now, there's bad arguments for it, too. Don't get me wrong. But there's a couple that I, I actually respect somebody that takes this position. Uh, sometimes they kill the wrong person. They actually take an innocent life instead of taking a guilty life. And because that possibility exists, we shouldn't be able to kill people uh, based on the government's decision through a court of law. I, I disagree with that, but ultimately I understand that argument. However, the reason that doesn't work in abortion is abortion kills an innocent person on purpose every single time. That is what a successful abortion does. There are botched abortions where the person lives, but a successful abortion, the purpose of it is to kill an innocent life. The purpose, even though it sometimes misses, of capital punishment is to take a guilty person's life. And that is just. Taking an innocent life is not. And that's why, even though I understand that argument from somebody that doesn't like the death penalty on the, you know, if they're on that side of the argument, they don't like the death penalty for that reason, I understand why they could use that to oppose the death penalty. I don't understand why they could use that argument to support abortion. The second one that I actually do respect is... The government has proven too corrupt to be trusted with such power. I actually understand that. Being kind of a libertarian-minded person myself, I get why you would be skeptical of government power and you'd say, you know what, this government, maybe I could see the death penalty working in a just government, but it's very clear that our government is corrupt and cannot be trusted with this power. I can respect that. I understand that argument. But the reason that that does not work with abortion is if that's the case and you don't trust the government, why would you empower them to kill children? You would just be empowering them to take another life. And so that argument doesn't work in the context of the abortion argument. Now, the third one is I think that they should be given time to repent. Okay, I can see that. If you're a religious person and you want the person to not be executed because you think that they should have adequate time to 
think about what they've done and change their life and basically let God decide how long is an appropriate amount of time for them to do that. Again, I disagree with that. And especially since you are a religious person, if you're a Christian, I would appeal to, for example, the commandment in Genesis where it says, if a person spills blood by man, uh, by man shall his blood be spilled. So I would actually say if, you're, if your basis of your argument is a religious argument, I think you could counter with that. But regardless, I do at least respect your position on that. But again, that really doesn't pertain to the abortion argument because the baby hasn't done anything wrong. And so I understand some of the arguments against capital punishment. But none of them apply to the abortion argument, which is why that is a moot point. Ultimately, the answer to this argument is, for me, exactly the same as my answer to the last argument about being both pro-life and pro-gun. I am pro-capital punishment specifically because I am pro-life. And I think that when you take a life, your life should be forfeit as a response to that. And so I am pro-innocent life. I am not for people that take other people's lives being able to retain their own. They have been proven, they have shown that they cannot be trusted with that liberty and therefore their right must be abridged in that circumstance. This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.